Hi, welcome to the SQL tutorial video and today I'm going to demonstrate three functions, namely the isNumeric, the isDate and the isNull functions. Very useful functions. The isNull, sorry, the isNumeric and the isDate functions work in very similar ways. So let's have a look at those first. So isNumeric and isDate are functions that you provide a column or a piece of data and the function will return true or false depending on if that piece of data is numeric or is a date. So let us look at, um, hold on, let me just run this script from scratch. So we've got almost 19,000 records here and we've got a postal code column here um, of various addresses from various countries. So these countries looking at down here, there's the US, there's Australia, there's the UK, and other countries besides. Because of that, the postal code differs in format. So some of them here are numeric only, some of them are alphanumeric, and some of them I think will be um, just alpha. So what we can do is you can use is numeric to determine whether our postal code is just a number or whether it is not just a number. So let me say a new column and we'll do is, oh, is numeric and we give it a single piece of data which in this uh, example is going to be a column and I give it an alias and if we run that we will see is numeric will return either one or a zero depending on if if this field here is numeric or not so you can see here v9 is not numeric and this postcode here is not numeric, so it returns a zero. And when we've got that logic in place, we can use it in our where clause. So we can say, I tell you what, all I want to see is where our postcode is numeric. So we can say whether where the is numeric uh, of this field is one. And if we run that, we'll only get the numeric postcodes. And if we change that to be zero, we get the remainder, we get the opposite. So that's uh, that works fine. That's good. Um, and also, just because we've got this is numeric function in our where clause doesn't mean that we have to have it in our select. Um, we don't need to return the column to actually use it in our where clause here. So that's pretty handy. That's pretty good. Um, the is date works in the same way, but it is slightly more tricky to demonstrate because. Although we have a date column here, it is a date column, so it will only it'll only store valid dates. So I can't use is date for this column because it will only ever say it is a date. So let me just try and give you a visual example here and say um, select uh, is date, and I will give it a date. I'll say the thirtieth of June, um, twenty twenty one. And if I run that. It says it returns one. Yep, yeah, that is a valid date. But if I change after the 31st of June and I run that, it'll say, oh no, no, it's not. That isn't a valid date. So it knows how many months there are in, uh, uh, how many days there are in a given month. It also knows when February has a 29th day um, for leap years. It, it's, it's, it'll return it an accurate one or zero if it is an accurate date. So this is really good if you've got a data column that is a free text column, but it's got dates in there, and you're relying on people to type these things correctly. Um, you can use is date against that column and return any any entries that are not dates, and therefore you've got a list of things that you need to fix and address. Okay, the last thing to look at. Is is null? And this works slightly differently. So if I just run this again, we've got a column here that is uh, that has nulls here. Look, and what is null does? It, it doesn't determine if it's if the value is null or not. It doesn't return one or zero. What it does is it is if the value is null, it will return a, a substitute value. So if I put in here is null. And I, uh, it, so this function here, unlike the other two, it needs two pieces of data. The first piece of data is what it needs to evaluate, which in this case is that middle name column. So I'm going to do pe.middleName. And then comma, 
The second is the replacement value. What do I want to show if there is a null value? Well, maybe I want to do that. So if I just give my new column an alias, you can see here, in fact, what I might do just for, just to make things a little bit easier, if I cut that out, stick it there. So now we've got a middle name column and we've got an is null column that's evaluating the middle name column and where there are nulls you see it is being replaced with the word error where there aren't nulls where there is a valid data it's being replaced with well it's not being replaced rather it's keeping whatever data is already there so what's quite nice i suppose is if you wanted to return or, or maybe you're moving data from one table to another and you don't want to have nulls you want to have just strings empty strings so if you change your is null to to replace nulls with an empty string then you get this nice clean looking set of data here um now it's quite handy the the null um evaluator because let's say i'm unsure whether this column has nulls or not but i want to see whether um whether this column actually has data so i can say uh, where pe dot middle name um, is not an empty string and if i run that it will return for me all of this data here okay now you'll see there's no nulls in this list so if i say no no i, I don't i want to say anything that's an empty string so if i do equals empty string Oh, you can see now I've got these here that are empty strings. But again, there are no nulls in this list. So, nulls are funny things. They aren't strings. In this case, the column is a string. They are they're an absence of data, so you can't really evaluate it in this way. So, the is null is really good. If you want to try and determine whether there's data in a column or not, but you don't know whether there's also potentially nulls in there, then you use this is null function. And you say, get me everything where is null empty string equals empty string. And in that case, you're now getting an awful lot of data. Most of the most of them are nulls. Um, uh, the odd example kind of flicking past um, there. Some are empty strings, some are nulls. And this here is correctly evaluating that and saying all of these are missing a middle name. That's the end of this video. I, I hope you find it helpful. If you've got any comments or queries, please leave them below. Uh, thanks very much for your time. See you next time.